Shiviti Hashem Lenegdi Tamid. I place Hashem before me constantly. One of the fundamental principles that one has to master in order to follow the path of Hashem is contained in this very verse. It means that we should constantly remain aware and conscious that we're always in Hashem's presence since Hashem's presence fills the entire universe. People don't behave the same way in the presence of a mighty king as they do in the privacy of their own home. They don't speak in a king's presence in the same way they do among their own family members. If people know that they're constantly in the presence of the great king, the blessed holy one, and that he watches over all our actions, they will immediately be filled with awe and they'll feel humbled. We would be ashamed to sin or not act properly if we knew we were dishonoring God. As the verse states, Can anyone hide in secret chambers that I cannot see him, says God. Those who want to be close to Hashem and improve their avodat Hashem, improve their service of Hashem, will always keep this in mind, which will help them reach the level of a tzaddik, a righteous and saintly person that holds by Jewish religious standards. The truly devout will keep this thought in their consciousness and develop it until they reach the level of a tzaddik. They will then continue to rise in their spiritual level on a daily basis. And even if someone finds it difficult to come to terms with God's omnipresence, we should keep envisioning this concept in our minds until we succeed. At the same time, we should repent completely for our previous sins since that's the barrier that prevents us from seeing the truth. This is what the Prophet said in Shayao 59.2, Your sins acted as a barrier between you and God. Sanyadin 22a explains that this means that one has to place God's presence at the forefront of one's thoughts while praying, and certainly one has to remain conscious of His presence at all other times. In the book Sharia Alakha, page 24, it asks a very good question. It says, How is it possible to concentrate on the mitzvah of placing Hashem before me always, while at the same time trying to concentrate on complicated Talmudic or halachic issues? It suggests that while someone is studying, they should keep a card with God's name always in view. And this will suffice as a reminder, and they can fulfill this mitzvah that way. Mesilat Yisraelim chapter 25 says that the strategy for gaining this level of fear is to think about the fact that God is everywhere in the world. He watches everything that happens and nothing goes unnoticed by Him. Once it becomes clear to us that we're always in His presence, we will automatically come to fear Him and will strive to avoid doing anything that would be inappropriate before Him. Nothing happens behind closed doors without Hashem being there. There's simply no escaping this concept. As we mentioned in the first video, the sages taught in the Mishnah, Know what is above you, an eye that sees, an ear that hears, and that all your deeds are recorded in the book. That the Holy One, blesses He, watches over everything. He sees and hears everything. Every deed a person does makes an impression on the world, and each action we do is being watched. It's not so easy to internalize all these ideas, it definitely takes time to get there because it's not something that's tangible that we can see or feel with our senses. It takes a lot of practice and study. But it's also not the right train of thought to completely ignore this concept if one feels that he fails or can't ever succeed. Ignoring it and going too long without thinking about it can and will most likely make a person's level of fear reach very low levels. The Afila Liv says that whenever someone speaks or has any future plans, he should accustom himself to use terms like Bizat Hashem, with God's help, if God wishes, if God willing, and so on. These phrases should become a regular part of our vocabulary. At the end of the day, no one succeeds because of his own talents. A single leaf doesn't fall from a tree unless Hashem wills it. Everything is totally dependent on Hashem's will. The Midrash tells a very interesting story. It says that there was one time a man that took money with him to go buy an ox in the market. While on his way, Eliyahu and Avi met him and asked him where he was headed. I'm going to buy an ox from the market, he says. So Eliyahu and Avi tells him, Say with God's help. The man looked confused. Why? Why is that necessary? I have the money in my pocket, and I'm on the way to the market to buy an ox right now. Everything has already been prepared. So the man continues on his way. But along the way, he loses all his money and had to return home empty-handed. The next day, he tries again to go buy an ox. And again, he lost all his money. And this goes on for several attempts. Finally, the man realized and remembered what Eliyahu and Avi had told him that he should use the term with God's help. At his final attempt, he says to himself, Bezat Hashem, today I will succeed in buying this ox. And after doing so, not only did he succeed in buying the ox this time, but Eliyahu and Avi also revealed to him where all his lost money was located. The Alakha goes on to explain how to develop Yad Shemaim, fear of heaven. In the book Shema Yisrael, it lists several ways to introduce fear in one's heart. 
to look up at the sky, to look at one's tzitzit, to recite the section in the Varim where the Torah demands the fear of heaven upon each person, to study Torah while wearing tefillin of Rabbeinu Tam, to spend a lot of time in synagogues and study halls, to be careful only to speak permissible speech, to speak and promote peace, to fulfill the mitzvah of standing in honor of the elderly and Torah scholars, to picture God's name in one's mind constantly, to study Torah constantly, to behave with humility, to study the Arba Turim, the Bet Yosef commentary, and the Shulchan Aruch regularly, to eat the Shabbat meals specifically in honor of the Shabbat, and finally to speak only sparingly, spending long terms of time and silence. Besides everything just mentioned in this list, it's important for each of us to pray for Hashem's help to help us attain a higher level of fear of heaven. The Talmud teaches in Shabbat 156b that the mother of Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak was once told by astrologers that her son would grow up to be a burglar one day. And from that moment on, she always made sure that he never went bareheaded and she instructed him to always pray that the evil inclination not control him. Taking the advice of his mother and with the heartfelt tears in her prayers, he ended up becoming one of the main authors in the Talmud and Rashi states that he was one of the most pious in all of Babylon. Someone once came and asked Rav Chaim Soloveitchik to give him a blessing, a blessing for his son to grow to be a great Torah scholar and possess genuine fear of heaven. He replied that the son's level of Torah knowledge will depend on how much the father studies with him, while the fear of heaven is decided on how many tears his mother sheds as she prays for him while lighting the Shabbat candles. He adds that all of us should have an advisor, generally a rabbi, that he himself possesses the fear of heaven, that we can discuss strategies for overcoming the evil inclination, and that everyone be very careful about what people they associate with. The sages teach that if a person keeps sinners around him, he's likely to suffer the same punishment as they do, even though he doesn't join them in the sin. On the other hand, Rabbi Yona adds that if we keep company with people who perform mitzvot, we will be partners in receiving their reward even if he doesn't join them. Needless to say, if we invest our money in a queue of organization run by God-fearing people, they will get all the reward for what their money has accomplished in that organization. Sponsoring a Torah lecture, for example, everyone that hears and learns anything from that Torah lecture, he teaches his son what he learned from that Torah lecture, and he teaches his son what he learned from that Torah lecture. You get rewarded for all of it, for generations. Investing in Kiruv and helping people get on the path of Torah, you become partners with Hashem. And this is by far one of the best investments that a person can make. Tractate Brachot 33b. Rabbi Hanina said, Everything is in the hands of heaven except for fear of heaven. Man has free will to serve God or not. The Marsha explains that although Hashem does not control one's spiritual level and actions, He doesn't control our free will as well. If someone just simply shows that he wishes very much to follow the ways of holiness, he will receive heaven's assistance. And if someone prays for such assistance, it is likely that in fact, he will receive it.